Savage Kitchen. We're making a cocktail today. And this is one of my personal favorites. I make this all the time at home. I make this for friends. It's sort of an old standby. And the reason I love this drink is because I think it is the perfect marriage of an old fashioned and a Manhattan with like little hints of a paper plane thrown in. Now, this is what you're gonna need. Pick out your favorite bottle of bourbon. I've got my trusty Noble Oak here. Then you're gonna want a honey liqueur. I personally really like Drambuie for this because Drambuie, although sweet and has those warm honey tones, is not overly sweet. It has that scotch base, so it still has a little bit of heat to it. Then pick out a vermouth. Not all vermouth is created equal. I really do think that a high quality vermouth that you like the flavor of is important here. I personally really love this uh, Carpano Antica. Is that how you pronounce it? from Giuseppe Carpano, you know, that guy, uh, Antica formula. I, um, I personally love this vermouth. If you've had a bottle of vermouth sitting in your liquor cabinet for years, it's probably bad. Get rid of it. Vermouth is a fortified wine. It does go bad. Once you open it, it should be stored in the fridge and use it up. So if you're not a big vermouth drinker, maybe buy the smaller bottle. Uh, but for this cocktail, you're, you're going to taste the vermouth. So get a vermouth that you love. Then one of my favorite spirits, Amaro Nonino. Now I did an Amaro tasting a couple months back. And I promised you in that video that I would do some more Amaro cocktails. This, uh, this of my Amaros probably gets used the most. I love the Nonino. I use this and the Amaro Montenegro a lot, I would say. I don't want to say exclusively because now I have way too many Amaro bottles, but I do use these a lot. I This one in particular I like for this cocktail because I think it adds a sort of nutty quality. It reminds me of like walnuts and is absolutely delicious. Then to finish it off, some chocolate bitters. You could do this with uh, Angostura bitters. You, yeah, Peychaud's might be a little weird. You could play with the bitters on this, but personally, I think the chocolate bitters just turn this into a rich, decadent treat. And then we're gonna garnish with a Luxardo cherry. All right, let's get into it. Now, fresh bottle of bourbon, yes. I have a habit of, <laughs> when I make these, I make them large. And <laughs> I didn't realize this until I was uh, preparing for this episode and I pulled out the glass that I want to use, and this is a really cute Nick and Nora. It's kind of a large Nick and Nora actually, but I tend to make this in a uh, double style. So I'm going to make a portion that is going to fit in this glass, but if you want to double it, by all means, I'm not judging you. I might encourage it. So for this recipe though, let's get some ice. We're going to do an ounce of bourbon, which an ounce of bourbon never seems like enough, which is why I always double this drink, but this is the appropriate ratio for this cocktail. So just go with it. And then we're going to do half ounce of Drambuie. And then half ounce of our vermouth. Oh, this has such a, um, it almost smells like a port wine. It's not far from a port wine. That'd be interesting. Maybe try making this with a port wine, like a tawny port. It might be really good. And then a half ounce of our Amaro Nonino. So basically it's a two to one ratio, two parts bourbon to one part everything else. I might go a little heavy with the Nonino. Not mad at it. A few dashes of chocolate bitters. If you want to add some syrup from your Luxardo cherries, by all means, if you want it to be a little bit sweeter. But um, these two ingredients in particular do add a lot of sweetness to this. So personally, I don't think it's necessary. Um, I will say, though, that this is definitely for the spirit forward cocktail lovers among you. It's not, it's not bitter, but it's not overly sweet. All right, stir, stir, stir. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> okay, 
into our Nick and Nora. See, I could have put a little more. I know I'm mad for not making myself a double. <laughs> We're gonna add to the volume of this by adding a cherry. Maybe we'll add two just to raise that uh, wash line. But you know what? Cocktail police don't live here, so I don't really give a fuck about my wash line. Battery Park. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. I mean, you could do an orange peel with this. I feel like the citrus would be nice on top, but not entirely necessary. And I don't have any oranges on me right now, so eh. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> like I could put a straw in that and be perfectly happy. <laughs> Let's just take one more sip. <laughs> Mm. That, I, so I personally really enjoy the combination of bitter and sweet. I also like combinations of like sweet and salty and it's a similar play. I think those, those two concepts, right? So in this drink, I think, I think you actually get a little bit of the bitterness of the Nonino right up front and then it eases into this silky smooth and kind of sweet from the uh, Drambuie and the uh, sweet vermouth. Oh my God, really good. Mm. Highly recommend. Let me know if you try it. I'm also su super curious, as I said in the middle of this, I think this might be really good with a tawny port as a replacement for the mouth. I'm gonna try that next. So if any of you try it, let me know. Leave me a comment down below. Make sure to hit subscribe, turn on the notifications, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, friends.